What is it, Dave? Tell me. Well, when when coach sees this two three zone that he does, they, the other teams are doing, and they're putting it on it, you know, trying to clog up the the lane. Coach puts out there an extra shooter, and he causes the teams to go into a four one zone. And we've all know in the four one zone, you can guard the middle, mm-hmm. or you can but guard you can't the top guard of the, the corners key. really either too. You can't really yeah, reach and it. you have a hard time like, and and that's what coach does. He spreads the zone so thin, right? That at that point they want to double team Shea, they're leaving the lane open. But here's so the we thing see all I'd these say guys too. cutting. We see these guys going back door. We see all this like just but IQ knowledge. Here's that's the IQ happening. thing. Michich. When they go zone, he goes mm-hmm. Michich. It's not like oh, yeah. every single time. Like yep. but whenever Shea's not in the game and they're sitting back in this type of zone, because Shea can penetrate through zone. That's not really a problem oh, yeah. for him. Um he but it's here's not. what he needs for it to happen. The ball needs to be moving from side to side. If the ball is stagnating on one side, there's really not any player that can, you know, penetrate against a zone when it's stagnated. Like hmm. James Harden in his prime could do it, but he's not that level anymore. And here's what I want to go back to though. But Steph but Curry why we get could to the do zone? it in his way because he could stretch it, right? Sure. And that's where the rules have changed, bro. You were saying that the game is better for slender guards. Think about the calls that Russ didn't get and Steph did. Why? Mm-hmm. Because the way they officiate the game. And they actually right. encourage to the players to be more slender and take more impact when you get contacted, right? So I think right. it all relates into this whole, like, we're watching, like, the last 20 years of basketball kind of play out because, you know, LeBron, Steph, like, these different versions, and mm-hmm. now we're watching Ant go against SGA. And, mm-hmm. yeah, Ant can bitch and moan all he wants bro but the reality is when the refs go look at the tape they will by the way they'll they'll see if they're right they're not going to agree with him and they're going to get harder they're going to get harder and i think this is all related oh yeah it's you know and and when we see zones and we're going to see a lot of these zones throughout this time you see josh get to get you know put out there and you see josh get to go into the corner um i think that's a really great place for him when a zone comes out um, and the reason is, is because Josh isn't afraid to shoot the ball and he's going to find a wide open person, um, whether it's cutting back door, but watch when teams go into their zones, what coach D does. And when coach D set, recognizes what's going on and, and how to beat that zone, it doesn't take him long. Sometimes it's Jay will, sometimes it's Isaiah Joe, you know, um, sometimes it's case and Wallace. Um, but it's one of those guys. And the one thing I love that he does too is that when he's when you know when he's trying to figure it out, you know why? Is because he sticks Lindy Waters out there. Yeah, Lindy Waters is like the test the test guy. What is he going to be able to do, create? What is he going to be able to do? You know, if he can do this, then I know that Isaiah Joe's going to be very successful. I know this person's going to be very successful. I know that I'll be able to go to this offense and be successful. And I love it, dude. I I love how he uses. Lindy Waters in that aspect because he's such a great role player that that you don't need a lot of time with him on the floor to recognize where what needs to happen where to go and he does that with Kenny Hustle he does that with a lot of guys um but my I love it when he does that with Lindy Waters you know and and sticking with the zone conversation right like a lot of teams aren't used to playing zone because most no. teams don't demand a zone and a lot mm-hmm. of teams are refuse to go to a zone in a lot of cases although it's very normal for teams to do it which is a new trend over the last like you know, since they reintroduced his own defense, you know what I mean? Sure. Um, it wasn't immediately caught on um, or picked up by a lot of teams. It was, it's been popularized now by, I think guys like mm-hmm. Nick nurse and stuff like that. But when a team it wasn't not, right away, for sure. When teams go into zones, I mean, yeah. Spolstra was really early to do it too, but when teams go into zones and they're not used to it, they have a tendency to do one thing, which is reach. And yeah. if you're in a zone, you have to be able to get to the position in that's where Shea can just carve teams up. That's why J Dub is right. so good when Giddy's out on the court. That's why Chet can pop and really stretch that defense. And if teams mm. refuse to send somebody out to him early, like I, I, one thing that's interesting about Chet's shot is I saw him shoot one after the buzzer at the end of the first quarter, I think, and sure. he knocked it down. But I kind of watched the rate of which he shot it, and he really needs a, a second to get that thing off. Like it's. There's a, there's a bit of a long windup for that thing. It, it will come down with time, but I would say when a zone gives him his full time to wind up on that three, 
he's going to knock it down 45% of the time. It's going to be higher sure. than his 39% average or whatever right now. And if he can, if they rush him by making sure somebody's always within arm's reach who can just put a hand in his face and reach at the ball, just do anything to disrupt his flow, it's, he's probably going to shoot closer to 25%. We'll call that the Victor mm-hmm. Wembanyama shooting, okay? Sure. So it's kind of like, you know. I like he's, that. Yeah, nice. exactly. Um, so – my point, anyway, I can't even remember my point, Dave. You take it from here. <laughs> but I, I think I think you're on the right path with that. And I think when you look at um, a shooter like like Shea, and you see that Shea Dort, um, these guys that take a little bit longer for their sh- shot, right? When they're in rhythm, why do I like that? Is because how many times do you see a flyby happen? Yeah, all Oops. the time. Yeah. How many times do those flybys consist of somebody hitting somebody, somebody running into somebody, somebody getting underneath the feet? I would say one out of seven or eight times. Yeah. You know, like, like that matters, right? Like th- those are the little things. It's just the tiny little things that, that matter in games like that, because it's going to take once or twice that a player does that. And then all of a sudden he's in foul trouble. Coach is mad at him. He's off his game now, you know, like, it's Man. it's the little things that I see Coach D teaching these guys that that are slight like um, I, I call it high IQ, but it's more of like how can I like get in your brain? How can I get in your brain and like I don't know, put babies in there and just let those babies create havoc in your brain and then just walk away. And then for the next like you know forty eight minutes, you're a total bitch to the the system. And I think that's what we're seeing this whole thing happen. The Oklahoma city thunder is that like, you don't even know, like it, we're, we're reading some of these comments right here. They're always they, listen, the Oklahoma city thunder so good that when we're done with the game, they sit there and they're like, the team that we just played is like, we should have won that game. We should not have let that team beat us. They can't beat us in a, in a playoff series. And everybody says that, but we're so good. They can't even recognize that in a four game series against the Minnesota Timberwolves, we would go maybe into five games. Yeah, it really wouldn't get to six, Dave. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't maybe it would six. get to six, but it would only get to six if one of our guys got injured. It would you know, not like the Timberwolves, do they wouldn't get to six? And that's the thing about it, is that like that's how good this team is, is that everybody else that doesn't know hoops very well is sitting there going, eh, maybe not it's in a, a playoff team. game series. They're just but a better team. Oklahoma City Thunder, man. Like, that's, that's it, bro. That's Dude, it. So that's where everybody else is, is trying to catch on. Are you it's sure? It's already too late. We already got the players. We got the sure? draft picks. It's over. Are you sure it's just not the rest, you know, being sensitive and calling too many for Shea? All right. Are you sure about that, Dave? I've gone back. All right. I want to I wanna be clear on this, all right? I went back. Are we better, or is it just that the refs are calling Ten too games. Many? Yeah. The most complaining that i've heard in 10 games and i went back and watched his free throws in those 10 games right and every single time he gets to the lane it's undeniable like there is a physical contact of somebody pushing him somebody slapping him somebody hitting him like it's so undeniable that not once have i seen a coach challenge it think about that and of all the free throws that Shea has taken this season, I don't remember one time where Shea has gotten up that they've challenged. And, and, and the aspect of that, the, the recognition of that, it's like the coaches, they're going to complain about it. Like, what the fuck is this issue down there? You could have called that, right? But they aren't going to complain about the call that is just made because they're not going to use their challenge, challenge on it. On because they know it's right. They're just going to complain about it because they can. You know, Coach T is sitting there and getting technical in back-to-back games, right? Mm-hmm. You know, good. How about Chris yeah. Finch wasting his challenge, but Coach waits for that Chet block? Well, it was, it was perfect. I like, mean, what, complain but, about but that, so, and so much more is that? Well, let, me just, let me just throw this out here. Is every single time that um, there is a moment that there's a foul call. I want everybody. This is your guys' homework. You ready for this, guys? Mm-hmm. I want everybody to watch what we do after the whistle's blown. The play's not dead. The play's not dead. We go get the ball. Why? 
because every foul and every play like that is a challengeable call. And they all know it. They all know it. So they go get the ball because then it's nobody jump ball. It's it's 100% our ball if we challenge, challenge it. The, the hmm. rest of the NBA doesn't even, it hasn't even caught up to that. Like how many times have we seen a challenge that wouldn't be of our ball this season by coach? Maybe twice or three times. But it would be like Chet versus, I don't know, like uh, Patrick Beverly in the jump. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, it was a massive mismatch in the jump. So like, again, we've seen coach challenge in the jump, but it's not been normal. So it's what our players do after the, the whistle has been blown. We keep going at it. We don't stop. We want it. We're hungry. Yeah, we are dude. And last night, dude, we had a badass party watching the game. Yes, dude. It was Being so much live fun. again. Yeah. Unk. So good to have you there too, man. Unk called the show right after we were done. Hell yeah, dude. It was great. It was so much fun, dude. Unk, jump on during halftime next time we're on. Hey, Love no, I was going to say is that we, I want to open up after we end the call. I want to open it up to anybody. So if we're on live and you want to join us to just talk the shit after we end the call, end the podcast, I want you guys on to talk it. Because just talking to Unk after uh, last night, we were all so pumped. Like we were it jacked was- up. So I want to be able out, to man. open we that up again because it was great. It was, it was the best time, dude. It was um, weird. It was fucking Strange. hilarious. We talked about things that we wouldn't normally talk about. But in the end, um, Sammy Dog, you know what's up. So we'll roll we'll with you anytime. Anytime right. too cool. You got it. I want to throw this in here um, in Ooh, the dude. comments, guys. Day Mom, all right? Um, Day Mom's one of our daily listeners. Um, she needs some help with a jersey, a medium city edition. Um, I'm going to let her put a, her, uh, the information that she needs. Uh, in Australia, you're not allowed or somehow they can't get the jersey there. So if we have Australian, even Australian friends that know a system around the system, uh, throw the information in there. Day mom definitely needs that information. Um, we want to help her out get a jersey that she needs in Australia. So let's help her out. And if I need to, I will be figuring that one out too. But I'm pretty sure we got some pretty smart dudes in there that will know exactly how to get that jersey for her. Boom. And Dave, so. thank you for everything. Thank you, Bluegill. We appreciate you yes. guys. And yes, we will see you next time. Love you. <laughs>